Salutations, my subscribers. It is Josh speaking here, and we're deviating from the usual content of video games and skits to look at a... I, I don't really know what to call this video. Is it... Is it science? Is it an opinion? Is it right-wing propaganda? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Um, so we're gonna take a look at Black Pigeon Speaks. Um, he is a, as far as I'm aware, an alt-right commentator on YouTube who is arguing due to recent evidence that phobic conditions may have a biological origin. Um, socially created phobias do not fit the definition of a phobia. And he's citing um, examples of transphobia, homophobia, and Islamophobia. Um, I have some undergraduate experience in clinical psychology. Um, we've uh, studied phobias, so I'm going to give my input. We've uh, studied evolutionary, social psychology, everything. So I'm going to give you my analysis of this video. Marcus Pembry, who is a pediatric geneticist at the University College of London, said the work provided compelling evidence for the biological transmission of memory. Thus, this area of inquiry could explain why most people are not particularly fond of the creepy crawly, for example, even if they pose no harm, like me when initially coming across garter snakes, for example, because phobias, or what we call irrational fears, could be, as the researchers call them, built-in defense mechanisms, or memories that were burned into the DNA of our ancestors, meaning you and I have the memories of not only ourselves, but of those that have preceded us. In the early 21st century, the most discussed phobias or irrational fears are, and I think you know, homophobia, transphobia, and of course, Islamophobia. And given not only the five general categories that phobias fall into, but also the developing concept of the biological transmission of memories, it would seem that these phenomena homophobia, transphobia, and Islamophobia were mislabeled from the outset and that this should be understood in a political context. So if you guys were paying attention, um, I'm going to requote him. And given not only the five general categories phobias fall into, but also the developing concept of the biological transmission of memories, it would seem that these phenomena, homophobia, transphobia, and Islamophobia, were mislabeled from the outset that this should be understood in a political context. So the two core arguments he's trying to propose in that paragraph, in that summary, at the end of his um, his introduction to this topic, is that the diagnostics or categorization of the phobias themselves cannot actually handle these type of phobias. They don't actually fit into those discrete categories. That's the first argument he's making. And then the second argument he's making is that phobias the evidence points towards phobias having a biological basis whereas these things have been created on the sociological level so he's basically like well this can't be classed as a phobia because phobias are inherently biological and the argument he proposes that there is a stronger biological basis than nurture basis to the development of phobias is of course just wrong it's just incorrect and um, because the vast majority of scientific literature does point towards a nurture argument a social and fear conditioning argument um so we're going to go into that right now um there's three types of conditioning fear conditioning there's classical conditioning vicarious con acquisition and informational slash instructional acquisition so for classical conditioning i'm just going to show you guys a lecturer who is going to explain that through and then i'm going to explain vicarious and informational acquisition. Welcome to our mini lecture of classical conditioning phobias. Phobias are defined as a fear that motivates us to avoid danger and threats. Phobias elicit a response physiologically before cognition is involved, an instinctual reaction from evolutionary history. Now let's look at conditioning. A form of associative learning is classical conditioning. Pavlov found that dogs learned to drool at the sound of a bell after the sound had been paired with meat powder being brought into the room. Watson w wanted to find out if this applied to humans and so undertook the little Albert experiment. He showed little Albert a white rat which he was not afraid of and found that banging a hammer against a metal pipe behind the infant's head would make him cry. 
Watson then repeatedly paired the stimuli of the white rat with the loud noise to achieve acquisition. Little Albert was then conditioned and would cry when the white rat was brought near. Operant conditioning is also a form of associative learning but differs to classical conditioning as seen on this slide. Here is an example. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope you guys understood um, the point that was being made in that video about classical conditioning. Now I know a few of you are probably going to be like, um, well how does this apply to you know, Islamophobia, homophobia and transphobia? So what you do is with the paired associations is, so let's take the rat example, you replace the rat um, with you know the minority group, um, X minority group. And then you exchange the negative association with, you know, a situation or, you know, um, just a negative event in general. So what happens is there's a generalization that can occur and then people become phobic of an entire group of people. Um, so if we're talking about vicarious and what's the other one? It's instructional or informational acquisition, vicarious acquisition is basically through observational learning effectively so if you have racist parents for example and they use racist slurs all the time they spout racist beliefs then you can learn from them but it doesn't have to just be other people it can be the media for example there's so all these different agents of socialization the media the parents and the people around you so if there's like um let's say a propaganda channel, uh, I don't know which one, which spouts pseudoscientific beliefs to try and make, uh, to try and justify your, uh, your prejudices, then that's gonna, that's gonna affect you as well, and you're gonna learn from that as well. Um, information and instructional acquisition, um, that is basically learning from getting information. So, Again, that can be brought on from the media, right-wing sources, in in regards to um, homophobia, transphobia, and Islamophobia, could be from other people. So that's um, I think that's a big one for today. I think that's one of the the agents of socialization, so like media, your parents, um, you know, other people around you can influence you a lot more than um, a singular experience, because you know you see these things all the time in the media. Alright, so I wanted to make a clarification in the previous diagram. In the blue box with the red text, it says generalization to outgroup. Now, that is an allusion to Tajfel's theory of social identity. So, um, Tajfel's social identification theory. Now, that theory of itself 
effectively warrants a video of its own. But the reason why it plays a role in this phobic conditioning is because of the biases that are created through formations of in-groups and out-groups. Now, this is a well-supported psychological theory, by the way. If you go on Google Scholar right now and you type an in-group bias, out-group bias, or if you type social identification theory, it's going to come up with thousands of studies which support it. This is one of the most famous theories in psychology. It's, it's well accepted in social psychology. Um, but anyways, you guys can do that in your own time or I'll make a separate video explaining that in much, much more detail. But anyway, we divide ourselves into in-groups and out-groups based on physical characteristics. This is, an ev this is for ev basically evolutionary reasons. If you form an in-group with people who are like you, then you can compete for resources better against the out-groups. So our physical characteristics that we may divide ourselves by is race. That's just one example. It doesn't necessarily have to be race though. It can be, you know, the clothing someone wears, it can be their weight, um, their gender, their um, sexual orientation. It can be any, um, you know, like biographic, physical characteristic. You know what I mean? It could be any characteristic really. It could be even ideological. But anyway, so in this hypothetical, I'll create a hypothetical situation. So there's biases which exist in those who belong into an in-group and biases which exist to those who are perceiving the out-group. So let's just say there's a group of black pigeons, okay? These black pigeons, they have a bias which is called in psychology um, heterogeneity, okay? So they view each, each other in a very individuation sort of lens. They sort of see each other as very unique. They appreciate the differences of each pigeon, they can t they can tell the tiny nuances in each each pigeon brain. You know, I mean, they can tell each other apart. They know that they all have different beliefs and and so forth. Um, but these black pigeons have what's called an outgroup bias, um, and this outgroup bias is called homogeneity. So they view anyone who's outside their group through a generalized and categorical categorical sort of lens so they will view the muslim group as being all the same okay so that's where that generalization occurs and that's where that comes in okay so the last quote from black pigeon speaks the conclusion to this innate biological phobia argument is if a phobia is a genetically inherited memory used as a defense mechanism as research is beginning to suggest, then phobia isn't really the word to be used when discussing sociological interactions. But the thing he fails to recognize here, um, because he's selectively picking sources um, to support his viewpoint, his prejudices, is that he's not taking into consideration most phobias are created from sociological interactions. So he's wrong. He is wrong all right guys so please comment rate and subscribe that is my first um my first video my first uh psychology video on this channel it's my first uh scientific video on this channel so it seems to be science versus right-wing politics on youtube that's something i've noticed um but yeah, there's thousands of examples you guys can look up online, um, clinical notes and you know case studies of people, for an example, for observational learning, someone who's been like bitten by a dog, um, and then they see their friend, they were bitten by a dog, so then they develop a phobia, and you know, so forth, so there's many different ways this can, this can happen, sociologically speaking, environmentally speaking, nurture speaking, um, so you guys can do some extra reading if you want, that's, if you guys find this interesting. Um, I'll catch you guys later. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.